Hey everyone, Karen the Warped Spinster here. Welcome to my channel, thanks for joining me. I am, as usual with these process videos, I have something in my head and I'm going to see if I can translate it into fabric. As always, I sort of know where I want to end up, but I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get there. I have some two and a half inch squares and my pile, uh, unruly pile of scraps here, which also I just noticed includes these pieces left from another block I made, and I think I can make use of those. My plan, of course, is to combine some planned improv, <laughs> I guess you would call it, with strips and two and a half inch squares. So I'm still working on those two stashes of mine. And it's nothing very complicated. It's just adding squares, I think, to the ends of strips and combining, well, the strips are alternating fabric, print fabric, colored fabric, and white strips. At this point, I'm planning to leave these as two and a half inch squares, though at some point I may start squaring them off or cutting them off to even them up. I'm not sure yet, but that's the plan. It's not very complicated, as I said, but I think I'm going to start with this since this is already made and it is not a perfectly vertical or straight line. So that, if I decide to use this, sort of makes the decision for me of whether they're going to be straight lines or on a diagonal. Or a mixture of both, of course, will probably be what I end up with. So let's start with that and I'm going to Am I going to do one square here and then cut that? Am I going to do two squares, which means I have to add more onto here? Let's start with a simple one. And I will do the square down here. Now, of course, I have the, I think, for simplicity's sake, at least starting, I'm always going to have the squares be straight, a straight line, horizontal or and vertical. So I'm going to start with that, which means I want to press this first, pardon my elbow there, <clears throat> and then straighten that. <laughs> Can't really line it up with any other edge because those are not straight. So then I want to add this on, and the question becomes, do I want to cut a little off of both edges, or do I want to cut it all off of one? I think I want to do a little bit of each, so I'm just going to sew this first, and then I'll know exactly where I want to do the trimming. And I've pressed it toward the square for no particular reason, I don't think it matters. It's the direction of least resistance because I don't have to fold seams back on themselves and I won't get the shadowing of the blue under the white. So, And now I want to trim this so that this square will be the reference point then for straight. And I'm happy to see this morning that my sewing machine is happy again. Lately when it gets tired, it starts sewing a basting stitch. So it'll do like a three or a 3.5 instead of a 2.5. And then I let it rest and it's happy. It really does need to go in for a little checkup. There's my first. Now, next decision is, do I want to have squares going this direction? Let me grab a couple of strips here necessarily be these colors, but do I want, that wouldn't necessarily, I don't necessarily want that to match up there. Or I could do 
a strip, print strip that goes all of the way, or I could do a white strip that goes all the way. This is the same fabric. This is just folded over. And that's a possibility. And then I could do a strip. Ooh, I don't mind the back side of that either. Do a strip there with, say, a square there. Hmm. Then what do I do down here? Excellent question. So that begs the question, am I going to be doing strips horizontally as well? That was not in my original plan. Doesn't mean I can't do it. I do that and say another white strip. I don't necessarily want to stick with alternating white and print strips. There's one I could do on the diagonal right there. And maybe another square there. I'm thinking that I want to keep the squares as squares, that I don't want to be chopping them off. I want to cut off the strips rather than the squares. And does that mean I want to do just individual units like that or do I want to build out? And am I going to have horizontal strips here? I do know that rather than cut this off, I would do strips going down here yet and down here and then cut off the strips rather than cutting off the squares. The squares I want to be have integrity as squares. Well, that sounds kind of highfalutin, doesn't it? These squares will have integrity. All right. Yes, I want to do units and then put the units together. That's my decision at this moment. We'll see what happens next moment. So I want to press this white and stitch that on, and then I can decide how wide I want that to go. My iron is running into my power cable for the camera, and that's not a good thing. So I'm just going to stitch that on that side. There is that unit. I'm not going to cut this off at the top yet until I know where that final cut will be. It will be better to yield. If I end up having to cut off more, then I'd have a little bit of crumbs here where if I cut it now and then again later, it may not have, may not be big enough to be a crumb, a useful crumb. Now, I really am wanting some more. All right, I'm doing units, aren't I? Pay attention to what you said, Karen. Do I want this to be this side or this side? Other blocks that I'm having in this sampler quilt have this side, so I think I will go with that. And let me find a couple of squares that I think will look okay with that. That blends in pretty well, but I don't mind that. And do I want those to go vertical or horizontally this way? Which means I'll have a lot of stripes going here and I don't want these to line up. That's gonna be too rigid. I have enough rigidity in here with these remaining as squares. And I would like to get some more angle going on here. However, in order for this to remain square, then I would have to have another piece that straightened that out. So, how 
do I want to do that? Get some more strips going here. Strip that long. And trying to keep my elbow out of things, but it's not working very well, <laughs> to be honest with you. And then a white strip, not necessarily that one. Let's make that, that's a, another folded strip, so that could be pretty wide and make that quite angled. And these aren't necessarily the widths all of these will be. And that's got a touch of red in it. What if we put a pink one there? Then when I put these two units together, something would have to square that up. I may want some more white in there, I'm thinking. Let's try putting those together and see what we think. I'm at the point where I'll be thinking about joining them up. I want some fairly radical angles here, as long as we're doing angles. Let's do angles. And since I'm not cutting these off, it means I need to add something, add this over here. Do I want the angles to alternate? Do I want them to, or maybe I just want this one to be straight then. Straighten that out so that I can then add it on to the one next to it. That's the ticket. I will do that. And now I am in a position to sew this on wherever I want these two squares to be on here. And whichever way, I, I think I like that way better. And then straighten up those two edges. Then I have another decision I'm contemplating when I come back from that. When I selected the position for these, I slid it more over here so that I wouldn't lose so much purple. I had less purple to lose in trimming it than I had on the rose side. So I slid it a little more this way. And now I'm ready to trim those. And to make this straight and perpendicular to these squares, sorry, I'm gonna to toss it between being on screen everywhere and <laughs> having the length I need to trim up. I want these squares to be sort of the determinant as the reference for horizontal and vertical. So if I line up one of my lines on the seam line with the squares, that means I'm going to get something perfectly perpendicular with the squares. I have another strip to use somewhere else. Line up that line with the square again, and you can see that I'm losing a lot of purple here. Would have lost even more if I hadn't slid those over a little bit. Now, for that other option I was contemplating, do I want to leave it that vertical, it's very vertical, or would I want to break it up with a strip in the middle? I had not, this was not part of the vision in my head, but that doesn't mean I couldn't do it anyway. Let me do a little more on this piece and start to see what they would actually look like when pieced together and if it needs some more interest to break that up. I'm thinking it might. The squares will do some breakup on the horizontal, but I'm not sure it will be enough for what I want. If I start doing more verticals here, and these strips are quite long. Not necessarily these colors, of course. Probably be some white in there, actually. 
white in there just for an effect. And then I put on a couple of squares in here somewhere, or maybe just one square. I should do some three squares as well. Hmm. Oh, that's probably off frame for you, isn't it? It gets to be very vertical and it's going to be a very long block, which, you know, I'm not necessarily opposed to. Maybe each of these, instead of being a section, could be a block. And then as they go into the overall quilt, it will disperse this horizontal square thing. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make some more, a couple more sections or blocks, whatever they turn out to be, and see what I think. So let me put together this one in some fashion, and then I will add something onto here next. Oh, look, we have another leftover piece. We'll see. All right, I will work on this section. Put in some angles there, probably. Or would I like some that are just a straight line? Ooh, I could do straight lines in the vertical direction and then do an angled one. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to do, this one's going to be all straight lines, I think. It's, it's a mystery, unknown, and when we come back, we'll find out what I've done. Got this together. I decided I wanted a very narrow strip of white in there, and it's mostly straight. <laughs> Went a little bit of an angle at the end. And this way probably be better contrast than I can do something like that. And it looks a very, fairly traditional, which I do have one block. The first one that I did that looks like a log cabin. So it's not out of the question to do that. But here's what I'm thinking now. And this is playtime, so I may just do it and see how it works out. So as I said, I could do a diagonal across here to break up all that verticalness, verticality. But here's another thought. See what you think about this. What if I abandon my plan for these to always be perfectly horizontal and vertical? And what if I spread that out diagonally, which means I end up cutting off some of those squares. But that could be interesting. I could do a third square. I can find one here. Hmm. I, well, I could do a yellow, a gold on this side. Run that diagonally across there. I've got length here to do a couple of things, so I think I'm going to do that. Yikes, we'll see how it turns out. I could actually afford to put one more strip on there, and I think I want a white strip. Do I? Let's try that out. Well, that isn't an even white strip, but close enough. Yes, I think I like that. So I'm going to add a white strip in and it can only be wide enough so that I actually can cover it at whatever angle I choose. So it can't be a very wide strip if I do a very steep angle. So I will put a narrowish strip on there. Isn't that a fun strip? Okay, what do I have for a narrowish? This will probably be enough, actually. 
I will add that on and then come back and we'll cut for the squares. All right, I have a wonky shaped strip up there, so I'll probably focus on down here. I can do an angle as steep as, say, this, but then I also have to allow for the seam and where that will put it. So, I will, and then when I flip it, let's do it this way. When I flip it, I need to still have some room for that, which means I might end up trimming off a little bit. That'll be okay. I move it this way, then I'm All right, so that's the angle that I want. Or roughly that, I will have to stand up to do this cut. And try not to get my elbow in your face there. All right. We'll see what happens. Slide this down. myself here and then I will have another decision when I come back am I going to line up these strips once I've sewn this angle or let them be off let's see what we decide and I know you're probably all calling out to me with something yes do that no don't don't so, if I line these up, then I will lose some of the yellow strip over here. If I don't line them up, I'm going to lose some over there. It's just the nature of angles. Or I could turn the whole thing around and do that, which I don't think I like at all. You may like it. Go for it. And how did I end up with the yellow over on this side? That was not my plan. I'm actually going to fix that because I don't. I don't like that. I will be back after I have switched those. That's better. I just didn't like that, those two yellows together. They were not complementing each other. Now, of course, I have an opportunity to do something pretty funky like that, and then I would have to slice off all of that and that, so I think probably not that. So now the question is, do I want to line that up and lose some over here? I think I do. Sometimes I would want to just make it jabberwocky like that, but I think I really want to try to line this up, which is always an interesting exercise. I want to see here if I do this. So I'm going to just kind of audition this, simulate this quarter inch with a fold over there. And in fact, let me do a light pressing of a quarter of an inch here so I can see how I want to line it up. Pardon my elbow. All right, so now when I flip this over, and this is to a certain extent, since I haven't got a 
measured angle here. It's probably an odd angle, like 41.5 or something. I'm going to try it there. And here I can just change the width of the seam. Now that's not something you could get away with if you were doing a true pieced block where you have to have certain measurements in the end. We do not have to worry about that here. I'm not worrying about it here. Your quilt, you may decide to do that. All right, this may not be, oh, that's not so bad. Huh. Well, maybe not. That's kind of wonky a bit. Hard to tell with the heart seam in there. I think it's actually pretty good. I will press it toward the squares since there's no white in there. Oh, there's another thing. There's first white between the squares. All right, and there is our angled squares, untrimmed, but, and I still have some strip down here to do something else. Hmm. So as usual, this is not how I envisioned the thing, but I kind of like it. I don't think I want another strip in there. Actually, let me square this up first. And I'm not going to trim down here because that's going to be probably a part of another block and I don't want to limit that width if I don't have to. So this has to be trimmed at least here at that point. I'm going to choose just a sort of arbitrary length for this and make it right there. And I've got a piece for another block. Maybe not this style of block, but for another block. I kind of like that. It is not at all what I had planned, but life seldom goes the way we plan. Yes, no. If I were to put this in the same block, I'm not at all sure I want to do that. I may do. <laughs> A stripe across here. I could band this with white. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Pardon me while I sit and ponder. I'm going to just do a slice in here. And it may turn out that I don't like this at all, but I'm just playing. These are scraps and I can no doubt use it somewhere, somehow. If all else fails, I can just keep working on it till I get something I like. If I don't like it, I can chop it up for crumbs. Now, again, do I want to line that up? Or do I want to not worry about it? Actually, I should go this way, I guess, if... I think I want to do that on this one. So we're just playing with angles. What's the angle? Jill, one of my surface design artist friends, I post my quilts on Instagram. She said, you come up with the best titles and that's kind of one of my favorite things about <laughs> designing quilts, to be honest. All right, that's different. I like it. Let's trim that up. 
Oh, we are going to run that one into a seam there. So I think I'm going to do one of my favorite partial seams and add a little strip of white in there. So I'm going to unsew this back a ways so that it's an unfinished seam, partial seam. I'll release it here with some scissors, I think, so you can see what I'm going to do. So I have just unstitched this back a ways so that I have access to this edge to sew on another strip of white. It doesn't have to be a very wide strip. So I will sew on another strip of white. Come back and I'll show you what I'm doing here. You've probably figured this out from previous quilting or from one of my earlier videos, but just in case. So I have sewed this strip on now, pressed it, and now I can go back and finish this seam again, and I've added this on without having to tear everything back. And I did that because I saw when I went to trim this that the seam allowance here, I'm getting glare on the ruler, the seam allowance here was going to be less than a quarter of an inch, which means I would lose this edge in the seam and I didn't want to do that. So I needed to add enough on that I'd have sufficient seam allowance there. So now I'm just going to finish that seam. I can trim that off, repress it, and it will be like new. I have trimmed that. I can now repress that and yay. Problem solved. It wasn't really a problem, it was a design decision and a challenge. Oh, I like that better with that strip in there. So now I can straighten this out. That's the beauty of partial seams. If you have an oops, I wish I'd done that earlier. If you have the opportunity for a partial seam, then you can change your oops into an ah. I could do the same thing over here if I wanted to, but I have no particular desire to do that. So I'm just going to straighten out that edge. And that's kind of an angled edge over there. So I will be true to that angle on this side. Just looking at the lighting here, it's getting darker by the minute. It's apparently, if you would like rain or cloudy weather, you just have me come and try to film a video, <laughs> record a video film a video, I'm showing my age. And it, it, you will get dark and stormy weather. Well, here's what I have of these two. This one is a little bit like what I had planned. I guess this is the closest to what I had planned was to have a couple of squares, vertical pieces going up, hadn't planned on angles, but there you are. And then this one started out being closest and then it would, it would do something like that to create a block. I'm not sure that I want to do that. I, I like this as a block of sorts. May end up trimming it one spot or another. Ooh, here's a thought. Ooh. I'd give it a try here in a minute. <laughs> Mind is always coming up with something bizarre. Make sure I'm staying in frame here. This needs something more. There's too much vertical, so it either needs to be shorter. I think it needs an angle in there because we have angles going in a vertical direction. This grounds it down here. but that needs something. 
easily distracted Karen is going to finish trimming this up. <laughs> it was bothering the eyes. And this needs trimming. And all of the blocks that I've been doing, I'm making them rectangular not angled off because when I put them together is when I can introduce angles if I want to. I may not want to. This really needs something. For one thing, it needs to be shorter. What if I put a white strip through that? Does that break it up enough? Maybe a white strip with a narrow strip of something else. Do I have a, what's the, oops, not that one. A strip like this. I should save this for another day because this video is getting a little long. I think I will do that. Let's save this one for another day and do some more playing with that. We've got this one. And this one, which may or may not be finished. So here's a thought I'm having. I'm going to try it. We're just playing today, right? What if I cut a bit off of here? And swap that out. I might have to live with that for a little while. I think probably next week we'll just revisit this start on these blocks. That may be too much, but let's revisit it next week. Well, we know at least we like this. <laughs> well, I like this and I like that. So we've done a couple of blocks that don't bear a lot of resemblance to what I first planned, but I am at least using strips and two and a half inch squares. That's something. And these we will work on next week again. Whether we want to add that on or not, I don't know. I have to live with that and ponder it some more. Let me know what you think. Doesn't mean I will <laughs> go with the majority vote, you understand but let me know what you think. I think it might be too much. What if we put white? All right, we're doing that next week. <laughs> what if we put a white strip in between? We'll work on that next week. So that's it for this week, for this video. We have two finished, semi-finished blocks. On Sunday, we will do the last clue for the mystery quilt, which I am working on, not as we speak, but as soon as I finish here and get this uploaded, I will be working on the mystery quilt. And the next week we will revisit this stuff. That's, That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to let me know what you think of this in the comments and we'll get back to that next week, next Wednesday. In the meantime, be well, be happy, be quilting. Peace out.